Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Power Surge, your videos of 20 minutes or less to get you through the day. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jerry Hasty. I will be your host tonight. It's always an honor and a pleasure to spend some time with you, to share the Word of God with you, and grow together with you. Um, let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into this message. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your Word. We thank you that as we study your Word, we see how important it is to make sure your word becomes a part of who we are, that we integrate your word by faith into our lives so that we can see change in our lives. And so, Father, we ask tonight that you will open our eyes even further to see and you will open our ears to hear what you have to say to us, that you will uh, reveal uh, your will for us tonight uh, in a very special way. I pray you will help me to speak the very oracles of God, that you will help me to adequately share with everyone listening uh, who you are and what you want from us and how you want us to live. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, okay, we've been talking about spirit, soul, and body, and we're on the soul, and we're in part 12. And uh, let's do a quick review before we get into today's message. In the last message, we talked about how when you got born again, your spirit was saved, uh, but your soul and your body were simply purchased. They weren't fully redeemed. That's going to come at a future state. And the extent in which your soul is saved is the extent to which you renew your mind to the Word of God, okay? And as you renew your mind to the Word of God, your soul begins to catch up in terms of, of uh, agreement with what's already in your spirit. So your spirit, man, is perfect. It's righteous and truly holy. It thinks like God. It wants everything that God wants. There's no contamination in your spirit, man, if you're born again. But your soul is a work in process. And uh, you're going to have to continue to renew your mind with the Word of God throughout the entirety of your life. You'll never stop doing this. And you'll have to continue to do it until either Christ returns or uh, you go to be with the Lord. And uh, when you get to heaven your soul and your spirit will be lined up with your body and all three will be perfect, okay? Uh, we talked about how you have to put off the old self. That's the old way of thinking, the old way of living that you had before you got born again. And you need to put on the new self, which means you have to deliberately do these things. You have to deliberately put on the new self or renew your mind to the Word of God. In other words, it doesn't just happen, okay? It's like putting on clothes, taking off clothes. The, it's telling you, take off the old self, right? In other words, get rid of that way of thinking, get rid of that way of behaving, and put on the new self. Well, what is the new self? The new self is your spirit, man. And you're putting on everything from the Word of God that's in your spirit. You're starting to live what's from your spirit. You're starting to live out what's in your spirit because you're studying out the Word of God and it's transforming the way you think. Okay? Uh, to renew your mind, you have to offer yourself up as a living sacrifice. That means not just your body, but your thinking, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. Because if you're set in your ways and you're set in your thinking and you don't want to change your thinking, then you're not going to be able to renew your mind and change your mind because you're unwilling to let God change you. You're unwilling to let him work on you, okay? Um, we found that when you renew your mind, you recognize God's perfect will for your life. See, God's will is in his word. His word is his will. And, and by studying the word of God and, and using the word of God to transform your thinking, then you will learn what his will is for your life. And, and that's the thing. That's why it's so important for believers to study the Word of God. They, 
God's words are his thoughts, his feelings, the way he, what he desires for us, what he think, how he thinks about us, and so forth and so forth. And you can only understand that when you, when you get in the word of God and learn about who he is. Amen? You learn about who he is. All right. Let's go back to our foundational verse. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And, you know, if you've got the English Standard Version, it's probably better to follow along with that because it's just easier for the Spirit to communicate with you because you're not, you're not distracted by the different translation that you're reading from as opposed to what I'm reading from. So I'll be reading from the English Standard Version the whole time. Uh, so our foundational verse is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So where does sin start? Where, where does it all start? You know, we, we always talk about somebody fell from grace when we see them sin, right? But where did that start? Where does it start? Uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 4, chapter 9, I'm sorry, chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. This is about Jesus here. And it says, But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Some versions say, Why do you think evil thoughts in your heart? Okay? So we see in this verse that all evil thinking starts in the heart or starts in the mind, okay? Or it's a part of your soulish realm. So all evil and all evil thinking starts there. Before you ever see evil in the natural, it, it started here in someone's mind, okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 and 28. This will bear that out. Jesus speaking says, you have heard it said that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman and with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. See, again, we're talking about the heart, the heart of a man. Okay. The heart in this sense is that part of your heart. That's part of your soul. It's your mind, your will, your emotion. And Jesus is saying before you ever do anything. Even if you never touch that woman, if you look at her lustfully, you've already done the act in your heart. So you're already guilty. You're already guilty. Before you ever commit the act, you're guilty. Before you ever actually do it in the natural, you've already sinned in your heart. Okay? This bears that out. Okay? So sin and wrongdoing start in the heart. They don't start just by, oh, I just somehow ended up sinning. No, it was here before it ever ended up in the natural. But the part of you that needs to be renewed with the thinking and thoughts of God's word uh, or will is your soul. And, and you can only renew the mind and change the way you think on these type of things in the word of God. Okay. All right. So we know we need to renew the mind. So how do we do that? What is, what is, I mean, there's many ways that we could talk about, but let's talk about the primary way to do that. How do you do this? All right. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Paul is speaking here, and he's, he's saying some very powerful things here. And, and just listen very carefully. For the weapons of our warfare are not of flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. What are strongholds? Strongholds are things that get in your mind that are sinful that you can't get out, that you've built a sinful stronghold. Well, the Word of God can destroy that. It can break it. Amen? We destroy arguments, and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So, let's just say this. Any thought that comes to your head that argues against the Word of God or 
is in disagreement with the word of God is a thought that needs to be taken captive and thrown down. Okay? We need to take captive and throw it down. Uh, you can't just throw it down either. You need to replace that wrong thinking with right thinking, and you do that with the word of God. We see here the word captive. In the Greek, this word means to subdue, bring under control, or to subjugate, okay? Again, believers often will say, I just, you know, I, they let their thoughts run wild. You know, they just think anything, and they think, okay, I can't control it. But the Bible is clear that you can control it. If you're a believer, you can control your thoughts. You don't have to let every thought get into your head. You know, there's a, a man named uh, Kenneth Hagin who's since gone home to be with the Lord, and, and he refers to it this way. He says, you can't keep the birds from flying around your head, but you can keep them from nesting in your, in, in your hair, okay? So what he's trying to say is the thoughts may come from the outside. Satan is constantly speaking contrary to the word of God to your mind. He's tr constantly trying to get you to doubt God, to doubt God's word, to sin. These are things, this is his job. This is his MO. He speaks to you. And just because you have a thought doesn't mean you have to entertain that thought. Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? You don't have to let that thought penetrate. You don't have to let that thought get in. But here it tells you you need to take every thought captive. Now that that doesn't that doesn't matter what thought it is. Is it's coming to you, you got to take it, grab it, and say, okay, is this thought in line with God's word? Or is this thought in line with the kingdom of darkness? If it's in line with God's word, you can let it in. If it's in line with the kingdom of darkness, you cast that thing down. Okay? you cast it down, you destroy it, okay? Understand that, that it's like if you've ever been to a bar or something like that, there's a bouncer at the door, okay? And he's there for many reasons, but one of them is he's not going to let anybody in there that's under 21 years old because there's alcohol in there. And so he's sitting there at the door and someone comes up. He's like, can I see your ID, please? And they look at him and we're like, well, I, I'm 18 I'm, or I'm 21, so I can come in. And he's like, no, I, I need to see ID. And if they show him ID that shows they're under 21, he's like, you can't come in. See, if... If the, if, the, if the card says they're 21 or over, he's like, okay, come on in. See, that's what you have to do with your thoughts. When the thoughts come, you stop them at the door and you analyze it. Is it in line with God's word? If it is, let it in. If it isn't, kick it out. See, but the only way you can do that is to get into the word. To renew your mind with the Word of God, to know what the Word says, to know how God thinks. If you don't know how God thinks and you don't know what His Word says, you won't know if the thought is right or wrong. You won't know. So you just let any thought in. And that's what a lot of Christians do. They're not studying the Bible. They're not studying the Word. And they just let any old thought come in and it's destroying their lives. It's destroying their life because they let everything and anything just run through their mind. They watch crap on TV. They listen to crappy music that's not in line with God's word. They hang around people who are just not raising them up and they're, they're not hanging around with people and they, they're not witnessing. Now, give me your, no, they're not, they're not witnessing. They're hanging out with people and they're sinning just like these people. And then they wonder why their life is a mess because they're, they're letting their thinking and their behavior just go down the toilet and, and, and they're not studying the word of God and renewing their mind to what God's word says. 
So you can't just let any old thought run wild in your, in your mind. If you do, you're going to have a wrecked life. Amen. Um, but let's close with that. Uh, we're going to talk uh, more about this in our next session. Uh, but we've seen that renewal of your mind is something that's a lifelong process. Uh, one of the ways you renew the mind is once you get into the word and you understand what the word of God says and you know what it says, then because sin starts in the heart and the mind, you need to stop the thoughts from coming in. You know, you, you can't let them enter in and entertain them. If you let those thoughts enter in and entertain them, then you're going to sin. You're going to fall short. But if you stop those thoughts and you capture them and say, I'm not allowing this thought in and you reject it then you're going to have victory. And the more you do that, the easier it gets. Amen. So none of this is going to matter uh, if you're not born again, if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord. Uh, accepting him as Lord is as simple as, as saying a prayer. Uh, believing that God sent Jesus to die for your sin uh, that you can't atone for your own sin, that Jesus had to do it. He took your penalty so you could have his righteousness. And if you believe that, you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he took your sin and you, you say, you know, I'm going to accept Jesus as my Lord. I repent of my sins. I turn from them. Anything that I can, that he reveals to me is wrong. I'm going to reject it out of my life. If you do that, then you, you'll get born again. You'll, you know, and then he can continue to transform and change your life by his word, by his spirit. Amen. So with that said, let's have a word of prayer. And if you want to get born again, just say this prayer after me. If you mean it from the heart, you will get born again. And then we'll talk a little bit afterwards. Amen. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. I've fallen short of your glory. I can't measure up to the level of perfection you expect. But Father, I know Jesus can. Jesus did. And because of that, if I will accept him as my Lord, I will be saved. And so, Father, today, I accept Jesus, your son, as my personal Lord, my commander in chief, the one I am allowing to control and rule my life. And I thank you that he's my savior. Fill me with your spirit. Guide me by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you said that prayer and you meant it from the heart, you got born again, you need to get into a good Bible-believing church where you can fellowship with other believers. Uh, your a pastor can speak into your life. I'm not going to get into it, but Christianity is not a loner type of thing. You have to have other people like-minded around you. You have to have other believers around you. So uh, if you need help with that, you need to find a church, please drop me a comment in the comment section. I can help you. I know people, I can get you in touch with uh, a good Bible-believing pastor who can speak into your life and, and help you grow. Amen. So just drop a comment in there. But uh, do me a favor, guys. If you like this video and all the prior videos, please subscribe to the page. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, all right? Put a like on this video. Comment on it. Share. It helps the algorithms. And when the algorithms start kicking in, this video will be seen uh, more widely on YouTube and Google and all these platforms when people search for, you know, keywords and things of that nature. So if you like it, please subscribe, like, share, comment, and, um, you know, that will help me a lot, and I would really appreciate it. Amen. So just remember, uh, like we've always said, God loves you, I love you, and we'll see you next time.